Good morning and welcome to the Yarn Waffle podcast. Uh, my name is Liz, I'm here in York in the UK and this is my little crafty podcast where I talk about all my knitting and crochet and crafty things. I'm joined by my co-host Cal, um, who really wanted to join in today. She's come up straight away right for the introduction. Normally she waits till she's heard me speaking for a while. Yeah, it is uh, Wednesday the 22nd of January. It's a... Uh, it's a blue skies and fluffy clouds kind of day outside the window. It's looking really pretty out there. Nice and cold. Good January day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm recording a week later than planned. I was stuck at Dutton's where I work. It's a traditional haberdashery in York. I work there um, three days a week and the rest of the time I'm a full-time crochet uh, designer. <laughs> Sorry, Cal's distracting as per usual. Um, yeah, so I was helping cover overtime there last week and I couldn't record, so I'm a week later than planned. But the plan is that I will also be recording next Wednesday to get back on schedule. Because there was, looking like there was going to be a bumper crop of finished objects this week. But the two sweaters that are very, very close to being finished, I actually didn't get finished because I got distracted. And that will, we'll get into that. We'll get into it. Um, yes. So, sorry, Cal's going to be just doing what Cal does and I will crack on with what I have finished. Um, so the first thing, on my last episode I showed all my whips and that was a really good thing I think to do at the start of the year because it made me realise how close a lot of them were to finishing and how I actually wanted to finish them. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. I've been cracking on and finishing as much as I could um, and mainly it sucks. It's me. It sucks. So yeah, I finished the um, second of the crazy Zalba ball socks that I was knitting for Dutton, as I mentioned before. Um, the, the, this is the second of a pair. The other one is already there on display. Sorry if the camera wobbles. There is a cat. <laughs> yeah, so this is the second. Uh, the other one is on display. And yeah, it's just my basic sock recipe, which is knit on 2.25 uh, millimetre needles, um, 64 stitches. I work with the magic loop method and I do a short row heel and um, on this I've done a rounded toe. So it's a really nice rounded toe like the decreases at the top of a hat. I will be releasing this as a free pattern on Ravelry when I get my act together. Who knows when that will be? <laughs> but yeah, so there we have one one of what is a pair. So this will be going to the shop to join its friend and yes they will live happily together. Sorry you're really wobbling. I don't think there's anything I can do. Cal will settle down, she's just a bit excited because yes we're talking. Okay so the second finished object is also the Crazy Zauber ball and um, yeah this is a different colourway. I don't know the colourway numbers. I don't have them with me. Um, with the... Sorry, cat, cat. <laughs> the, these come in so many different colours. Um, and they are, as I've mentioned before, a fractal ply. So you will always get this sort of gradient, this marling effect. Um, but also you will have these sections where you get the single colours showing through. That's just how a fractal ply works. Um, I have knit these in the same way but what I did for these rather than the other ones is I um, reeled off a little bit of the ball of wool and um, used that for the short row heel because that way the gradient doesn't have a breakage point, doesn't have a line here and I'm sure that doesn't bother a lot of people and it only mildly niggles at me because I mean in this one you can barely see it but it is just here, just here there is a little line that um, yeah, you could just, it's one of those things, it's a problem that probably doesn't need to be solved, but I found a way to solve it, so <laughs> that's what I did. Um, yeah, I really like these, they're probably, um, they are going to be a Christmas sock, I think they're pretty much really cool, like Winterfell colours, so they're going to go into my Christmas box of socks, which is quickly filling up, and um, later on in the year, I think we'll do a recap of how I got on with that, and um, how many socks are currently in there, I don't actually know. But I'm getting close to my 24 pairs. So yeah, so that's another pair of finished socks. Yeah, so these are the underwing mitts uh, by Erica Hauser. I will put the name on the screen in case I've said it wrong. Um, and they are colourwork 
fingerless mitts. They have um, like a tessellating pattern. Um, is that the right word? Tessellating? Don't know. Um, but yeah, it's quite a, like an intricate pattern on the back and these wonderful sort of mythical moths moths are real but and then you've got the phases of the moon down at the bottom i just i i love this pattern this is the second time i've knit it i've prepared for myself these are a gift i need to weave these ends in before friday when they will be given um i knit this in a couple of minis that i dyed up myself um and i did run out of the lighter gray but so i had some drops alpaca which mixed in mixed in mixed in really well and I to be honest I don't think you can tell that I've had to change colour I think that's because the grey I dyed was a bit of a semi-solid so it's not a flat colour so changing it didn't really make much difference and it's only I think I changed the top of both of them because I knew I was going to run out so they would actually be the same and I've made a few mistakes this is meant to be a full circle and I think it's so one of those things, it knits up really fast because it's quite a small thing and you spend a lot of time concentrating on the chart and then when it gets to the end you lose concentration. Or at least I did. So that's what happened but only I will know that there is a slight mistake and they will be very much loved by the reciprocant. Um, so yeah, that is my third finished object for the week. I do have another one, it's hiding behind me but I'm going to wait to talk about that because there's a little bit of a story behind it. So I'm going to move into works in progress. Carry on, carrying on with um, the whips that I was talking about last week. Um, I was knitting a pair of um, another pair of Christmas socks in uh, the Dusty Dimples colourway. I can't remember what this colourway is called. And it, I was knitting it in an old lace pattern that I'd found, and I just wasn't doing. It just wasn't moving. It wasn't moving a lot at all. So I ripped that out completely to the cuff. Uh, picked up the stitches and started knitting in uh, this is the London Bridge pattern by Mina Phillips of the Knitting Expat and I'm much happier with this it's a much simpler pattern I haven't excuse me I haven't put a lot of work into it and um, so it hasn't grown very far mainly this is just sort of picking up when I don't have anything else to do and it seems at the moment I've always got other things to do but yeah so that has been ripped and is back on the needles and growing slowly what else am I going to talk about? Okay, yeah, so again, this is another whip that was shown in my previous episode um, and it is the gloves that I was making for myself out of my own hand-dyed self-striping yarn. So these have had some progress. Um, to be honest, I probably would have finished at least one of these by now if it wasn't for the fact that they're too big. So by quite, quite a lot. I mean, these are for me. So, I mean, yeah, you can, they're, they're too big. They're too big in the thumb. Um, I had knit, this is my own pattern that I'm very slowly creating. Knitting patterns do not come out quickly for me, at, at least. Um, yeah, so I had knit a friend um, a pair of gloves with the same stitch count as this. But I had done it using colour work and my colour work does tend to shrink things in a bit so I, I'd forgotten I'd done colour work when I came to do mine and th they are way too big. So my plan is to rip out again right back to the cuff, so right back where I, where I started from. Um, and I'm going to go down a needle size or two. Well, quite a lot. I mean that's, that's a good inch either side of ease there. Nobody needs ease in gloves do they? Um, but yeah I don't want to re-knit this cuff, it's a long cuff, I don't want to do it. So my choice is to either go down needle sizes or to sharply decrease after the cuff. Um, I need to go down at least 12 stitches, 8 stitches, more than that probably. Yeah and then re-knit these. But I wanted to show them before I did that so you know I actually have made some progress on them it is just progress that has to now be ripped out and started again but yeah these might be finished by next winter who knows but yeah tale of woe the one exciting thing is it's th this is um self-striping yarn and i dyed this up i enjoy dyeing self-striping yarn 
And I have been back at the dye pots and there is some self striping yarn coming up later to show you. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What's in this little bag? Nothing. Uh, actually, what is in this little bag is some yarn by Giddy Yarns, which is waiting to become a sock. This was her December film club. I think it's the Schindler's List colourway. This was one of my little Christmas presents to myself. There was also two pounds in here. Don't know why. Um, so the other sock work in progress that I will show you is a, a finished sock and it is quite a long finished sock. There is no point whatsoever putting this on a sock blocker. I do not have one long enough. Um, this was a yarn that we got in at Dutton's, a sock yarn, and a new one to me, it was a Katia yarn, and they're called Socks in a Box. Um, I wanted to try it to see how it knits up. And you get two 50 gram little cakes, um, and it's supposed to make a sock with a full gradient. It does make a sock with a full gradient, but a really chuffing long one I mean, this come, this is a knee sock on me. I had to take out the um, bind off and do a slightly different one. I think it, this is, is it Judy or Jenny? Judy, Judy's mad. Surprisingly stretchy bind off. So which is, I mean, it's really stretchy. It's fab. Um, yeah, so this, this has sort of sparked an idea because I do like experimenting with different sock yarns and different commercial yarns and I do knit socks really quickly. So what I think I'm going to do is um, a little sort of add-on series um, where I will be reviewing commercial sock yarn. So I'll be knitting it and talking about it and yeah. So that's why I'm not going to massively talk about this one yet. I'm really, I mean I'll show you. It is, it is very pretty. Um, it's a gradient you can see. Um, but yeah. I don't hate that it's a long sock, I do wear long socks more than more than short socks. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I wear long socks a lot, I wear boots a lot. So I don't hate that it's a massively long sock, but yeah, it's a bit it's a bit crazy. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I, at some point, hopefully in the, the next few days I'll film the first episode and um I'm gonna be talking about Zabable and the Katia yarn in the um the first couple of episodes of that. So I think that'll be quite good fun. But yeah, one mahosive sock. Is that everything? No. There is a sweater I'm going to show you. I have been working on my novelli. But before I get to that, I want to show you my um, fading point, which is a pattern by Hokey Locatelli. It is a massive shawl, massive wrap. Um, it takes five skeins of fingering weight yarn, and I'm using my Good Life collection from Ducky Darlings. It's absolutely fabulous. I'll, if I remember, I'll put the picture on the screen here, because it's a really nice picture. Uh, what you do with this shawl is um, you start at either end and you work towards the middle, so you're working on two pieces at once. Then when you get to the middle, you join in. Don't think I have a pattern with me. Um, so this is why this, this bag is very cramped. And this is, I'll show you, lots of ooming and ahhing. So this is the first piece. I am on to the third colour. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, not so much the lace sections, but that's just me. I'm, I'm, I'm not, a, not a massive fan of lace. I can do it, it's just not my favourite thing to do. But look how that's fading together, isn't it beautiful? So this section has stopped because I am at the lace, next lace section and need time to think about it. And this is the second section where I'm just into the second colour. Obviously I have to finish with the third colour on the first section before I can start adding it into the second section. I didn't want to make all my balls make all my balls into 50 gram balls. That doesn't sound right. Hmm, never mind. Uh, yeah, so this is the sec second section. And again, I have stopped because it is on exactly the same lace section. It's just repeated. Um, so yeah. At some point I will sit down and, so I thought I was literally, so I was um, pushing all my needles, all my stitches off the needle. Mm, words, words are hard. Um, yeah, so at some point I will sit down and knit both these lace sections sort of back to back and then I can get going on all the fading garter again because that's really good fun and actually goes surprisingly fast. Um, 
Ooh, um, 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 lots of erms. Uh, da -da -da -da. Right, so I'll bob that one back in there. Hopefully more progress to show on that on the next episode. Right, so the, the last working project that I'm going to show today knitting wise is my Novelli which I mentioned in uh, the last episode when I talked about all my whips. I hadn't touched it for a fair few months pretty much since um, I think episode 3 of this podcast um, I showed it on that episode and then um, it pretty much hasn't left the studio or been worked on since and that, that's no fault of the sweater it just needed a little time out just because I wasn't feeling it it was back and forth um, socking stitch at that point and I don't mind doing that at all but yeah I don't know for some reason it just wasn't the project I wanted to work on at the time so it sort of languished up here and got slightly forgotten about so I have finished the back and the front um, it's got this lovely colour work at the bottom uh, which was probably the most fun part of it to do uh, the top is ribbing which has got short rows in so at this side it's this is all done in the same piece and what I'm probably showing off really well there is how bad I did these short rows this is the back section so it doesn't matter too much but yeah there are quite a few little holes there it's for me I'm gonna just sew them up I could, I could rip them back and do it properly I did them better on the front I'll show you Lots of stitch markers in this. Uh, yeah, I did them better on the front. On the front, I did the Japanese short row style of doing it. And yeah, I'm quite happy with how those ones turned out. But yeah, the, the back is a bit of a mess. But we'll have to deal with this. Um, and this is knit in the uh, Sheepies Metropolis for Ply Yarn. Uh, it does have a slight spongy feel to it. Uh, but it's going to have short sleeves. The pattern has you knit so much and then change to the main contrast colour uh, and then fold it under so you get this little edging of that I'm not going to change colour but I am going to do the foldy over little sleeve thing the reason I'm not changing colour is the chances are I will always be wearing it over a long sleeve t-shirt and I think if that was a dark colour at the end and I'm wearing a dark colour underneath it you're probably never going to see it so I might as well keep the yellow that was my theory who knows if it work I'm also not entirely sure how short this is going to be I haven't tried it on yet I thought I'd knit the body a good few inches longer but when I actually measured it um, when I picked it back up again didn't look like I had so if I stand it up it's actually going to be quite short so at the moment I don't think I own anything that I could wear with this I'm much more of a trouser than a, than a skirt or dress girl um, but this is definitely going to be a, an over wearing over dresses kind of way um, yeah but yeah this is a novelli it's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter it's it's a beautiful pattern it's very well written I can't wait to have this as a finished object but I as of yet I think that's probably one of the reasons it's stalled as a project I don't know how much wear I'm gonna get out of it I feel like I have to <laughs> yeah I think the fact that I would have to buy something so that I can wear this with it makes it sort of a bit of a strange knitting project in a way it's not practical beautiful but it's not very practical but hey ho it's coming along and should be finished by the next episode and that is all the knitting works in progress there is a little bit of crochet to talk about um, and there is some acquisitions and there also is um, news of some stuff that's going into my Etsy shop I am putting some yarn and some stitch markers into my Etsy shop on this Friday but we'll talk about that in a bit I'm just gonna um, pause the uh, camera and restart it so that I can continue waffling on without it cutting out on me okay I'm back right so as I showed on uh, the Novelli tee, pretty useless at short rows. Or at least I don't have it as like a muscle memory in my brain. If, but when it gets to a short row section in a sweater pattern, I have to look at what I'm doing. 
I think I've tried doing various different ways. There's German short rows, Japanese short rows, as I ended up doing on that one, which I actually really enjoyed. Um, that's it's where you. Um, there are tutorials. If you want to learn how to do Japanese short rows, go and look at a tutorial. It's really easy. You just need some stitch markers. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed doing that method. But I thought. I should probably get some practice in doing short rows because it's really the only way I learn things is through repetition. Um, and there is a few patterns out there by a designer called Woolly Wormhead who does the most amazing hats. And if I own a few of these patterns and they've been on my favourites list and my want to knit list for ages, but I genuinely thought they were just way beyond my skill. Um, so the one that I was particularly looking at was the top hat. It's knit sideways, so it's knit using all short rows all the time. It's an amazing construction, really happy with it. Um, so because I thought it's going to be a bit of a knit which is complicated, it's going to tax my brain, I want the yarn I'm using to be fun. I decided to use um, something that I got as a little present for myself. Well. I'll put the picture up on the screen of the Christmas presents I got for myself. I know I haven't covered them on here, but they'll crop up from time to time and it just makes the episodes really long if I'm bringing out stuff that I bought months ago, you know, a while ago when I haven't recorded, blah blah blah. Yeah, so the, the picture is on the screen of everything I got. The, I got a couple from Rhapsody Yarn, I absolutely love her bright colours. I was really just needing bright, cheerful colours, but the, the, the big pack in there is um, the Greatest Hit set by Dye Candy. I had bought Dye Candy Yarn for my staff leg and become slightly obsessed with all her colourways. So when she released this as a pack and it's her, her best sellers, um, her, the, you know, the, 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 the yarn that is her most popular yarn and she put it all together in a pack. Um, I had to treat myself for Christmas, yeah. So I did. And I've been putting it very sparingly into my mitered square blanket, uh, which is what I'm, I'm doing a square a day blanket. I'm not going to show that today, I'll probably just show it once a month. Um, but yeah, I've, very sparingly, it's like, it's the most precious yarn that, you know, I can't, I want to put it in every day, but can't do that, can't do that. So yeah, it's absolutely beautiful yarn. It's just so beautiful. And so I also had left over from my stuff, like some of the Reaper colorway, the black that she has. Um, it's just such a good black. It's so saturated. I mean, it's it's not tonal at all. It is black, black. Um, so yeah, I decided to do the top hat using the Greatest Hips Minis and the Reaper colourway as the main colourway. Um, so I'll put a picture of the top hat as it is as a pattern on the screen now so you can see it's got these like branch, these leaves or um, flames so to speak and I liked that idea and I thought with the black and with the colours we'd probably get like a nice stained glass effect there's a lot of jazz hands going on okay so it's hiding behind me it finished it literally I knit it in three days could not stop knitting on it loved it loved it loved it um it's currently on my extra head because everybody needs that extra head um yeah I'll, I'll just show it on the head for now because it, it makes it sit quite nicely um so yeah this is a top hat by Wally Wormhead and it is knit in the Greatest Hits mini skein set and the Reaper colourway which is the black by Dye Candy. And I think it's my favourite thing in a, in a long time that I've knit. I thought I was slightly bonkers putting these colours in together but with the black I think it just works. And it's not like it's never going to get worn because I mean, my star flake is these colours. It, it's literally these colours. This black and this. So this isn't going to look crazy wearing it with it. So I'll take it off my little, my little extra head and show you a bit more about it. So yeah, it, it's literally knit side to side across like this. So like you're knitting up and then you're doing a short row section here. Um, she gets you to use German short rows, which I had used before but didn't really know how to do them. I'm now an expert, I would, I would hope to say. Um, yeah, the pattern is the most logical pattern I think I've followed in, an, in a long time. I was nervous going into it because I was just like, I don't, I don't think I can do this. And then 
it, it's so cleverly laid out. She's even like written down the stitch count so you don't have to count the little squares on the chart. She's written it down for you. She's shown you exactly what to do. Oh, just yes, thank you very much. So yeah, this is, it is bonkers. It is a riot of colour, but who cares? Sometimes we need a bit of colourful joy and I'm all over this. So yeah. It is, it is four ply fingering weight yarn. I'm not 100% sure how warm it is going to be as a hat. And this is what I, by, by the way, I wore my colourful boxy today because I was like, yes, all the colour. If you're wondering where Carl's gone, she's just sitting by the radiator. I might get her and give her, grab her, give her a squeeze before. And show her off before we go. Okay. yeah. That's it. Actually, it fits nicely. It's a little loose. It's a little slouchy, but I don't hate that. I like that. Um, I don't think it looks too crazy with the colours. I actually really like it. Um, yeah, I totally would knit this again. Um, oh, the, the fact that I'm umming so much today is driving me slightly insane. So if it's driving you insane, I do apologise. What I might do if I do it again is do it on a slightly smaller needle so it's a slightly tighter gauge just um, just to bring it in slightly because it is, like I said, it's, it's just a little bit loose on my head but for a sort of coolish spring day this is the perfect hat. You could pretty much wear this all year round and not be too hot wearing it. Um, it's just very cool in both senses of the word. So yeah, super cool. And another finished object. Four finished objects. Uh, I'm going to drive myself mad with them. Right, I'm going to speed along, even though this hat needs so much love. I love it to pieces. And I'll just pop it back on my head, my other head, and leave it there. And I'm going to talk about some crochet. First off, the uh, new episode, new episode, new issue of Love Crochet Magazine is out and these are my little um, ballerina caps that are on the front and with this you get the kit to make them. And I think I have another, oh yeah, that balloon, hot air balloon is also my design. So yeah, if you get this magazine, there's two of my designs. I do not need this kit because I have already made these. If you would like this magazine and this kit, leave a comment. Um, so what I want to do is to give this to somebody who does want it. So if um, you can't get this magazine, maybe you can't get it in, if you're in a different country, you can't get this magazine. It's quite a good fun magazine for crochet. Leave a comment if you're a subscriber, um, you know, and tell me why you want this and I will pick someone and send it out. If you want the magazine, just give me a shout. Leave a comment. So yeah, and yes, I have actually been doing some crochet. Just currently in a wool warehouse bag. It's, it's not massively exciting. I am working on um, some simple crochet patterns to tempt knitters into the dark arts of crochet. I keep, I keep hearing knitting podcasts that, that they, they started doing a bit of crochet and they keep calling it the dark art. It's like, hmm. So these are little um, makeup remover puffs. All of them need their ends weaving in. And what I'm thinking of doing is putting together a little kit where you will get um, hooks and yarn and patterns to make makeup removers and wash mitts and things like that and these are the wash mitts that I've also been making. These are based on a granny stripe blanket. I have adapted the pattern slightly so that it's the repeat, the row repeat is just a one row repeat rather than a two row repeat um, but it's still you still get a nice square pattern and I think that works really nicely and I also think so many knitters at the moment are actually making granny stripe blankets that this isn't too far off if you wanted to venture down the crochet path. So yeah, so I've made a couple of those. That's another one. I'm really pleased with how these turned out. They are 
very simple crochet I think what hook size am I using so I'm using just a five millimeter hook I don't know if that's going to come across I use the most basic boring hooks in the world um, they just they just work for me and plus I have a tendency to lose anything small and pointy I will lose so these are very cheap and you can buy them in bundles from Amazon or wherever you want to get them any craft shop will have these and um, so I just get lots of them and that way there is usually some where I can find them it, uh, there, there are many crochet hooks it you know all around the house I had a friend over yesterday and she was like oh there's a crochet hook on the floor I was like, that's not unusual not at all so yeah that's as far as I've got with that there's another little poof there um the other thing with this pattern I'm gonna do is make it so it's a little container like a little hand mitt um, I think that'll be really nice, really cute. Um, and there's some, so I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is work along developing all these little patterns in this set. I already have a few already, but I haven't got examples of them. And then I'm gonna put together what I like the best and what will fit with the yarn. And so you'll be able to get as much as possible out of the balls of yarn. This is the, um, this one here is the Rico Creative Cotton. I think I'm also using some Drops Paris in here. Um, they're very similar cotton and it's, um, it would be like an Aran worsted weight cotton. Um, but it makes very, very good for crochet. And I'm just sort of using this sort of ice cream palette at the moment. Just because we're heading into spring and I think it works really nicely. It's nice, nice for bathrooms, nice pastel colours for bathrooms. But yes, I have been doing some crochet and there is more on the way. My brain is starting to tick over and I've decided to dedicate one day of my uh, working from home um, as a specific day just for crochet. And even if it's not working on patterns that are going to be published, it will be just working on it as an actual craft and getting my uh, passion for it back, passion for it going again. And yeah, I'm, I'm it's going, it's, it's definitely coming back, it's creeping back in there, I have many ideas, it's coming along. So that is it for all that I have been crafting. Unless you count dyeing yarn, because I have been dyeing a bit of yarn. But first let me show you the yarn that I've got from other, other people's. So I, um, there are a few uh, mystery clubs that I am subscribing to that um, I might not be getting for much longer just because I want to keep the yarn uh, dyeing budget to a minimum as there are a few shows coming up and I want to have budgets to spend at the shows. I will be going to the Yorkshire Yarn Fest which is on the 21st of March um, and I'm hopefully going to spring into wool which I think is in April um, and the Wool Monty in Sheffield will be definitely going back there again this year. Um, I think that's in June. So as of yet, those are the three that I've got lined up that I'm definitely going to. And so I want to have a nice budget in place for those. Um, I'm also wanting to get some hand dyed yarn to work with some crochet projects. Um, I tend to use more commercial yarn for crochet projects, but definitely want some hand dyed yarn for that. Um, so let me show you what I've been getting. I don't know what's in here. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, the Ducky Darlings. Um, mystery club this was her december one i'm fairly sure i haven't got the january one yet and this was elves and the schumacher elves elves and the schumacher where does schumacher come from oh, that must be a sitcom or something um elves and the shoemaker and oh this is just amazing is this one it's called cobblers which until this moment didn't it didn't go in my head why she had called it cobblers but of course a cobbler is someone who makes shoes. <laughs> I must have looked at this name tag a few times ago. Cobblers? What? What? That? That's just not a name. But just, yeah, literally just twigged. Uh, so this is a yarn. Um, it's, 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 it's more teal than green. It's showing quite orangey and greeny on the screen. But it's, yeah, it's a very, very elven like, very Christmas elf in a way. And yeah, I, I love that. This can go in my Christmas box and definitely become Christmas socks. But yeah, 
as with Ducky, I'll just get you in there and show. It's not just a micro striping to colour. There is all the prettiness in there. Hmm. Yeah, very happy about this one. Nearly cast it on already for Christmas socks, but I am gonna still try and do a pair of Christmas socks a month, but <laughs> but 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 the other thing from Ducky. She is doing a mini skein club show. She had one month available for January and then there are um, a, one where you can get the three next three months buying them together. I haven't got that one yet. Don't 100% know if I will, um, but yeah. No judgment on the yarn. The yarn will be beautiful. It's more what I'm buying, deciding what I'm buying. Right, so crinkly crinkly. I want to get minis because I'm making um, my mitered square blanket but I also don't want to go too mad because I do actually have quite a lot and um, it's actually more greys. The, the flat greys are going, I'll show it next time, make you understand, make you, make, I will make you understand. <laughs> Dear me. Yeah so these are the three minis for January and they are absolutely beautiful. So we've got this sort of candy cane twist one, lovely mint green and a cream with green, red and orange speckles. Oh, they're just delightful. So yeah, they will be going in my mitre square blanket. I'm very happy with those. I might have to treat myself for the next three months. I don't know if she's got any places left. I'll find out. Okay, the next acquisition, I got another um, Gamer Crafting Mystery Loot selection. It's the third time I've done this. Whenever she, do, whenever she puts them up, I try and get one if I can. I just think they're such a good bargain. Um, you never know 100% what you're going to get. And for me, I like that because I find choosing yarn quite difficult because I'm just, I want it all. So a mystery crate for me is great. I know I'm going to love whatever I get because I pretty much don't hate any colours. Yeah, why would you hate a colour? I don't know. So there's a little bird chirping out the window, it's so cute. Um, yeah, so I was incredibly lucky um, because with these loot bags, crates, I think the minimum you get is 120 grams, so you're going to get at least one skein and a mini, and the max you can get is 300 grams, so you can get three full skeins. And I got two full skeins which is insane, and aren't these amazing? So this blue one, which has got blue on it, is called Underwater Dungeon, and it's a 75 merino 25 nylon, pretty standard, gamer crafting. Check her out online, all the details will be down in the thingy for all anyone I mentioned in any of the patterns, and probably my details, because I probably forgot to tell you those. <laughs> yeah, so this is Underwater Dungeon, absolutely love this colour. Don't know what I'm going to do with it but yeah. I am feeding stash at the moment and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are talking about you know working exclusively from stash and sizing down their stash. Um, I'm definitely going to be more thoughtful in what I'm purchasing but uh, yeah, my, fa my I feel like my stash still has plenty of room to grow so I'll be growing it this year. And the other one is this one. This is purple and it's called Burnt Black Current. And this is an MCM. This is a, a merino cashmere nylon four ply. And it's lovely. And I have, I think this might be another pair of mitts by Erica Hauser. Hauser? Um, I have a pair, I have a pattern by her which is some birdie ones rather than moths. It's, it's, they're a longer one longer words aren't working today but yeah i think these with them having that cashmere in will be lovely as wrist warmers so these might become those don't know what i'll be using as a contrast it wants something really light with a tiny speckle in it and i realize that's mainly just single plies that i have there Ooh. maybe anyway also in that I got um, two minis as well with the Game of Crafting Loot Crate. So this has got a little bit of sparkle in. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, you can a bit. And this is just a nice sort of muddy green tonal colour. And it's really lovely. 
So yeah, I'm super happy with that. That's all um, that has arrived in the post over the past few weeks since in, since the new year, I would say. Yeah. So now the, the only thing really I have to do is to show you what I am going to be putting in my shot of update. But I'm just going to reset the camera again. Okay. Um, I think I showed something similar to these on a previous episode, but now I actually have them in. So we have these little st sets of um, geometric stitch markers. So there are some sets of like 10 and some of the thicker ones are sets of 5. They come... Oh no, that's exactly the same thing. So yeah. Not showing you them to the best of the ability. It's a bit difficult to show them. I'll put some pictures on the screen because I managed to already take some lovely photos. So yeah, there are a few sets of those going in. Everything I am putting in is very limited at the moment. Um, it's pretty much just seeing how things go. So shop details are also on the screen now. And I will show you the yarn that is going in. This is quite a big basket. Right. It's a big basket. Don't tell Cow I've got the basket out. So I haven't been dyeing yarn for a while. I'm starting just to set up um, in my new house and I will mainly be dyeing self-striping yarn. I think that's the plan. That's what I've always wanted to do. I've just never been able to have a setup that makes it um, in a way, that, like I can produce it in a way that makes it cost effective to sell. But I think that is getting in the right direction. So what I am going to do is I am going to put all my old dyed yarn into my Etsy shop at the price I would normally have it at and then I'm going to heavily discount that because this is just stuff that's been hanging around now and kind of just needs a new home otherwise it's going to be adopted permanently by me because I pretty much love it all so just see if I can out of shot put those there talk about those in a minute so I have got a lot of DK yarn um, and they're mainly sort of tonal sorry about the wrapping they are just sort of tonal yarns with slight speckles in you can sort of see the variations in colour and there's like a coral one here so I only have one skein of each of these and there's some more sort of dark tealy blues colours are coming across pretty well on screen for these so this is very much a semi-solid at the top here and this one has more different tones in it underneath these are both these k's all of these would make amazing hats probably you know something with a little bit of cable in would look really cool um, i also have a dk in a purple with speckles so nice so let's say these are going to be quite heavily discounted in my shop just um it's coming up to time where I have to pay for kitten, so I need to bring some pennies in. Uh, yeah, pet, kitten is four weeks old today. Um, I'll put some uh, footage at the end if you want to see her. I have picked her out. We're going for a silver Bengal. Um, yeah, I've also got a name for her, but I won't be telling you that until probably until she's here. But yeah, I love her. I have two skeins of this yarn, which is based on the MTV uh, comic series called The Max and um, also there was comic books of the same name that is 4 ply I also have two skeins of my pumpkin colourway which is orange with little bits of green so they will be going in and I have two sco words and I have two skeins of my dark ice colourway, which is a micro striping tonal dark grey and blue speckled grey. These are really cool. I actually did a pair, I had a contrast colour to these, which was dark fire. And that's all, I don't have any of that at the moment, but I do have some dark ice. And then I just have some randoms. 
This is a sort of nice plummy speckledy colour. Again, all of these will be in my Etsy shop. I don't know if I'll I don't know if they had names, but yeah, it's pretty. This this was actually in my stash. It is one that I dyed. And I'm I'm I mustn't look at how well it goes with this. No, won't look at this. This is definitely going in the shop. It's so pretty though. It's really bright aqua speckled with greens and whatnot. Really pretty. Sorry if there's hairs. They, some of them are like a high twist base, but they're pretty much all 75, 25. And finally, really bright green. This is like, um, yeah, it's not a neon dye, but it's very much an acid green with um, grey and orangey speckles. I think this was one of the Halloween colourways I dyed when I was dying last year. So yeah, that is all the yarn. It will all be going in my Etsy shop on Friday. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I will put a post up telling you what time it's all going live. So all the yarn and all the stitch markers were going in. The stitch markers will be going in not at a reduced price. The yarn will be going in at up to 30% off. So grab a bargain. Um, the other thing that will be going in is I only have three balls of this. But yeah, I have been dying some self striping. Isn't it lovely? I have it on. I have three balls, so I have one on a high twist, I have one on a tweed, and I have one that hasn't been wound up yet, which is just on a normal 75-25. And this was my first time back dyeing self striping, so I'll just hold it up for you to enjoy. It is rich, bright jewel tone colours and moody autumnness. -ness. I, it's not perfect is what it is, so it's not going in at what will be the full price. Um, and this colourway is completely non-repeatable and it is going to be called my Old Boots colourway because uh, I just like it. Like I like my uh, mop bucket colourways. But yeah, so I have three balls of this cell striping 100 gram balls going in in the Old Boots colourway. Yeah, I, I, I love this on the tweed. This is amazing on the tweed. And that's the high twist. So this is an eight stripe repeat. Perfect for socks or gloves or whatever you want to make, but yeah. So there are three balls of that that will be going in. I won't have time, excuse me, to dye up any more self striping for this week's update, but stay tuned because more is coming. Yeah. This, my, my slight addiction to knitting cell striping yarn and buying it means I have to dye it so that I have more. So yeah, cell striping yarn is coming back and I'm really happy about that. Oh, boots. Yeah. And I think that is everything. Yep, yeah, so that is everything for this week. Um, I'll be back in a week's time. Um, with maybe two finished sweaters and I'll also have my mitered square blanket to show next time. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe, it really helps the channel um, and helps me, which is great. Um, and yeah, so from me and Cal, see you next time. Bye!